I think there should be a few um, people in here tonight that maybe haven't been into one of my webinars before and don't really know anything about me. Uh, for the benefit of those people, let me just quickly run through um, how I trade and what I use. I trade the Bund outright. I don't spread it with any other markets like Bobble or Shats. I trade just the Bund. Um, principally on a five minute time frame, I use the market uh, footprint and I use the market profile um, and I lean on the depth of market as well which is the ladder. You'll see um, on the screen at the moment the software is Market Delta. Um, my broker that I trade the boom with is AMP Futures um, but I'm not using their data feed for the Bund here, I'm using a data feed supplied by DTN IQ. It's quite a costly way of doing it, but I just prefer it because it's the most reliable, accurate form of data. Now, um, that's the setup that I use for the Bund, but I also trade multiple markets um, on the side, and I trade them on the hourly time frame, and I take a more swing trading approach. So, if I just minimize market delta you will see good old MetaTrader in the background which um, I use for my um, hourly setups now um, obviously I'm looking at quite a few markets I'm mainly looking at the FX dollar majors so we've got seven dollar majors I do look at a couple of crosses um, and I look at the commodities crude oil gold and silver spot markets and I am looking at the S&P the DAX and um, the FTSE 100 I traded last week, I don't look at it too much. But these are the markets um, that I am trading on a daily basis. When I'm trading the hourly setups, I'm doing more or less exactly the same thing as I do on the five minute. It's just a hell of a lot faster paced on the five minute. Um, so generally, there are obviously more setups um, when you're trading a lower time frame. The way I trade is basically leaning on simple technicals. So I'm looking at support and resistance. Pretty simple techniques such as breaks and retests. Um, I try and look for traders that are trapped, perhaps that have been trying to buy momentum through a swing high or sell momentum through a swing low, or trading basic technical patterns that trigger like head and shoulders and that get caught and then need to get out um, of a position. And I'll try and identify that happening in real time, trade against those traders and start thinking about areas where the market might move to, where these traders um, might be forced to puke, where their stops might be, all these kinds of things. And I try and factor it in. Um, and I've gone through a lot of this in, in the special webinars that I've got um, on my website. Now, what I wanted to go through tonight is five tips that you can use to increase your execution. Are five pretty simple things that you can do to get better as a trader. So, the first tip is know your setup. Now, what I mean by that is know what you are looking for. I'll give you a few examples of this. Okay, so I'm going to bring a screenshot, and these are things that I've actually put on Twitter, but they're examples of setups that I trade frequently. If you've seen these go on Twitter before and you haven't fully understood them, I'll be able to explain them to you now. But essentially, as a trader, you want to know what you're looking for. So what kind of price action you are looking for um, at a certain area uh, to do business at. So I'll show you um, a very, very effective price action that uses simple support resistance levels and the market delta footprint. Um, if you start watching support resistance levels with this in mind, you will see what links a lot of them and what can give you a very, very high probability entry um, into profitable trades. So first off, what we're seeing here, this is boom, this is on a five minute time frame. This is from a little while ago, but the premise stands the same. Um, you have a pretty solid resistance level. Now, if you get what I call a line in the sand level, and this is definitely an example of one. So you see here, all the uh, highs are at the same area, making it pretty obvious where the resistance is. Um, that tells you exactly where you can look to bid. Now, I don't buy on the breakout, but I bid the retest of these levels. But there is one thing um, that I look for on the lower time frames, and that is absorption back at the level. So if we follow through what's happening on the market delta here, just to explain the market delta for those that are new, you will see here that 
each one of these boxes is representative of a candle okay so each one of these is basically the same as a five minute candle what it is doing is it is showing you the size that is hitting the bid and the size that is lifting the offer now this particular type of footprint that I use is filtered to show only in excess of 250 lots in a clip now all these numbers are divided by an X okay on the left hand side you'll have the, the number of contracts that hit the bid and on the right hand side the number of contracts that lift the offer so what you can see here is when the market breaks out of this resistance there's heavy aggressive buying so here we can see 683 lots in a single clip get executed at market they lift the offer then 350 here 258 and 700 at the high you can see that the buying continues here okay now what's interesting is as the price comes back to the level from the other side you know using our very very simple technicals that pretty much everyone should know by now which is a resistance level is expected to become support once we're above it what's interesting here is that we get a very very good sign of absorption because as the market comes back into the level from above we see here that 560 lots and 300 lots here basically hit the bid but the market cannot get back below this area and stabilizes above it. So if we look at another example of this, this level here is over a slightly wider span of time, but again you see pretty much a line in the sand. Resistance, resistance. Um, here we just had a tiny little bit of uh, resistance, literally in the five minute candle. Just pull back at these highs, then punch through this area. Now this big green candle that punches through the area marked A here. As we punch through, I have drawn a line to show you what the footprint looks like. So look at the buying that's going through up here. So we're seeing 300 lift the offer, 596, 381. These are all blocks. Okay, so it's not only the buying that's taking place, but these are the block buying that's happening. So larger traders. So the market breaks out on this size, okay? And then you can see that there is a lot of chop as the market begins to roll over. Now, as it trades back into the level from above, look at the amount of selling and the market is unable to get back down through here. So here we see 321 hit the bid, 261 hit the bid, 375 hit the bid. Okay, market tries to stabilize. We've got 50545 clips hitting the bid here and more over here. And price just is not cracking that level in that little section, which is a good sign that we are going to run up to the highs. Now, of course, the other way of looking at this is let's say we get a swing high. So for example, up here we get a swing high, and the market trades through that high on large block buying and the market then comes back beneath and we get my swing failure pattern but the wick of the swing failure is comprised by large block buying then I know that I've got a higher probability short setup than if I just had the candlestick pattern on its own okay so this is a, you know a way of um, not only increasing your understanding of, of the dynamics of support resistance but essentially it's a way of filtering out levels if you can see that there is absorption going on that there is a lot of sell orders that are unable to basically clear the bid and get back beneath the level you know that there is a significant force and you can make a calculated guess that price is going to hold there and attempt to push higher again if it doesn't you can usually use a pretty tight stop and get out of the way um, because your trade premise is that all that size cannot crack the level therefore um, you know the market is likely to go up at that point so that's the first kind of technique know what you're looking for you might not be interested in the footprint that's fine this is not um, a webinar to tell you that you need to use the footprint the, the point of this is just to say know what you're looking for at a level you might be looking for a simple candlestick pattern you might be looking for um, I don't know, a one, two, three trigger on a five minute time frame. Whatever you're looking for, know what it is. Okay, that's step one. Now, step two is know your areas to look to do business at. So, we had the concept of know what you're looking for. The next concept is know where you are looking for it. Let's go over a live chart of the Boons and this is something that I do in my live room every single day I go through um, the the market and I decide where I am basically getting involved one of the things that I like a lot about market delta is that I can actually go and I can mark out 
levels maybe your charting platform does this I haven't had one that does before but I can go and mark out what is essentially happening at different levels so rather than a load of different colored lines I know when price is moving quickly what this line actually means but here um, one of the first things I do in the Bund each day is I mark the upside and downside um, ATR. The ATR is one of my favorite technical tools because it's very, very powerful. As soon as we start going past ATR on either side, I start looking for the mean reversion trades as long as they coincide with good levels. Okay, so we're not selling ATR or buying ATR just because it's ATR. But we're looking for it in conjunction with good areas to do business at. So if I look at this five minute chart and I tell you now ahead of time what I'm looking to do. So on the upside in Boons, um, we can see that the ATR currently comes in at 4422. Okay, because the current ATR um, in Boons is 57 ticks. So I've just taken that from Friday's close. We can see at 4422, uh, we have actually got a little bit of structural resistance okay um, in this area here I like to trade ideally at deep swing points as far past the ATR as I can for higher probability so what I would be looking at here is this I don't know whether we'd get up as far as 44.58 but I know that I would definitely be short there like literally no questions asked if we break above there and we swing veil it I will go short again what I'll be looking for is the trapped buyers so if I see that there's a lot of buying going on via the blocks at the highs there the trade will look even better but you can see here that I have put the last daily swing high Again, above that, we've got 45.16, which is the all-time high. We're not going to get up there in the next trading session, you know, unless there's complete Armageddon in financial markets. But again, I'll mark it out because I know that a swing failure up there would trade that. Don't worry if your high is different to mine um, because this is an adjusted chart. To the downside, you'll see that 43.08 is the downside ATR. And we do have a swing low there. So again, at that, uh, at that low, we could look for swing failure. But the biggest and best level on the downside is the 4274s. If we minimize this chart a little bit, I'll give you a brief example. I don't want to get into it too much, but a brief example of um, how I use the market profile here. If we have a look um, at the 4274s area on the market profile, you will see that it's the value area high from um, this day over here which was the last little swing high on the daily charts but you'll also see that it's the low volume area from the breakout day so if I bring in a daily chart of the buns here you'll see that this area here is a single print 77s the low volume area which you can see via this indentation of the profile from this big breakout day so it's a good area to go bid the volumes tapered off price often rejects these lower volume areas it's the value area high from this day here coming in the same zone and alongside that you know if you're not a profile trader um, and you know at this point you don't know what I'm talking about you can just look at that level and if we go and revisit it okay on the lower time frame you will see that not only is it past ATR but look at the resistance that we've got in that area it's a very very solid level okay so 74s you know I'm going bid at every single time so it's all about knowing the areas to do business at you know know where you want to see what you want to see if, where are the optimum areas where you're going to sit up and really pay attention otherwise you can get yourself in the trap of just examining it all day long and being almost brain dead by the time price comes to a very good area now tip three now you know where you're looking to do business write it down if you have a look in the documents folder um, you will see that I have put up my daily plan sheet again this was something that was given to us in prop I have used this for a long long time it will immediately increase your performance in my opinion um, it's very very useful it's pretty self-explanatory how you fill it in and what I tend to do is I put down the main figures so I'll write down the main stuff that's happening that day um, 
it's quite interesting to have a look at the previous effect because you can see what kind of stage the market's in. For example, you might be looking at a figure and you might say the previous effect was that gold moved before. Um, you notice that, that gold went first. It might give you a frame of reference for the next time that that figure comes out. Or it might be you know counterintuitive. It might be University of Michigan consumer confidence. Normally equities go up if the number's better than expected, but you might put down, well, last time it came in better than expected, but the market went down. So the last time this came around, it was ignoring good news. Under the technicals, I write down the levels that I want to do business at. So um, I generally write down the levels um, you know, here on the left hand side below market that I want to bid at and on the right hand side above market that I want to offer at. But you can do this any way you want. Um, then I write down my expectations for the day and then afterwards what actually happened and any conclusions I can derive from that day. So basically how did I trade that day? The reason this is really interesting um, and really really useful is you get a feel for when you're basically trading poorly by looking at this and summarizing it at the end of the day because believe me I've seen students who will come in um, with maybe one or two big levels that they want to do business at in the morning and then you know it gets to the end of the day and you say hey how did your day go and they're like I stopped out I've hit my daily loss and you look at the chart and you look at their plan and you're like hold on I don't understand the market bounced perfectly off of both levels that you've got on your sheet so how did you stop out for the day and they're like oh well I traded this level and that level and this level and this one up here and then the price went sideways and I tried to catch this breakout here and you're like but why is none of that in your plan and you see that they're basically at the mercy of the market you know the market makes a move intraday plan goes out the window and they're just trying to jump on every little bit of momentum so I know that new structure does develop you know in the day and you will need to hop on things that you don't initially think of in the morning but it helps to know at least your big levels because likely price will encounter them at some point and you you know you want to be ready um, everything that I do um, pretty much is known in advance. I have taken a very quick screenshot here. It is something that I tweeted uh, last week and it was my plan. So this was for the buns. Let me just talk over quickly what I was expecting. So the expectations for the day were neutral. Okay, I was expecting chop because we're within a D1 bull flag. So if I just pull this um, into the screen which is the daily bun chart what I mean by a daily bull flag is this coming down here okay so we're in a daily bull flag after this big run up I'm not really expecting a lot I certainly haven't got any major bias but I'm expecting chop from that market if you have a look what happened obviously you can see I was pretty much right I mean we definitely ended lower but this is where the day started and that's the action so essentially there was chop here now the areas that I was looking to do business at we only encountered one of them but you'll see here it was 143.48 and I put yesterday's single prints so let's go and have a look at 143.48 and if I draw a line here you will see where 48 is we the the low of the day was 49 on two separate occasions why was I trying to bid um, at 48 well, if we just quickly um, have a look what's going on, on the market profile, you will see that the single prints were from this day. So I wrote yesterday's singles because here was the single prints. It was the volume, the low volume area from the prior trading day. Okay, so if we break out of the day before's value area, which is here, how clearly you can see that, but if we break out of that value area into this low volume area we're basically looking to buy below value so I know that we have got quite a decent area there um, on the profile you can also see it as a level these cluster of prior highs okay now price doesn't hit but just one more thing to add here you can see from the plan that we knew where to be buying 48 if we go back to the first tip tonight which is know what to look for at these areas okay I'm going to pull up a screenshot of everything all at once here and what do you see as price comes into these 48 lows you will see 1000 lot clip hits the bid and price immediately reverses look at this buying as it reverses here okay so you see a thousand hit the bid 
um, price cannot break. In fact, here you can see the extent of the absorption. 1262 hit that bid and they can't make that price go offered. Look how quickly we flip to buying here. So the buyers just chase that straight away. 757, 375, they're all lifting the offer. It's something that I've said many, many times. Fuck the big guys because the big guys do their ass. Being a big guy doesn't mean you're a great trader. I have seen people trading 1,500 lots, 2,000 lots that quite frankly do the worst trades. But the dynamics of the market are quite obvious. If you get caught 2,000 lots long in a thin market like crude oil, you are fucked. You are going to be having to chase that price to get out. And this is one of the things that we can look for. Let's move on to tip number four. Okay, tip number four is um, don't be afraid to miss anything. Um, I am going to dispense with the bund for now and pop over to cable because I know there's quite a lot of H1 traders in here that follow my strategy, but. One of the things I keep saying to the guys in my live room, don't worry if you're going to miss the move. Forget about it. If it doesn't give you the setup that you want or something doesn't seem quite right, just wait. Okay. I say this because you know, there's a lot of excitement over what happened in cable. Um, we soared up to a new daily high and obviously up here we have got a pretty beautiful swing failure. So if I just mark it on the charts. Um, it's a very, very likely area that traders are going to get trapped. Okay, prices moved higher on the day. We've come into a big daily high. Um, we have moved up there pretty aggressively, and a lot of markets will get traders piling in on momentum, especially at momentum to a new high or to a new low. And the market can give us an important sign if they're trapped. But just because it gives us a sign doesn't mean that we have to trade. Okay, I know a lot of people that took this setup, and I think it's very, very poor. Yes, it's a swing failure. Yes, we break above a prior high. Yes, we close below. Uh, I mentioned this particular one because I did tweet it and I did say, this is not one that I'm going to take from a risk reward perspective. It just doesn't have the legs on it. Why? Because look at where our first level is, our FTA, okay, first trouble area. I've actually drawn this green line to show you guys where the, where the level is. We've got prior highs over here. Um, and we've also got a prior support low just before the spike up. You can't realistically expect the market to get back below there easily. So the risk reward just simply isn't in it if that's my FTA. So let's just wait. I'm not going to just be you know, pulled into the market um, unless everything is right for me. So unless I see my setup, unless I know that the risk reward is good. And you know, the market is constantly advertising. And I think the problem with a lot of traders out there that I encounter is that they are sold too easily. You know when you're watching TV and the ads come on, all these companies vying for your money, right, and trying to get you to buy something, chucking ads at you, and everybody gets pissed off with it, everybody gets tired of it, but the market is doing the same thing all the time. The market is advertising for buyers and sellers. You are, after all, remember, not a trader. You are a liquidity provider. That's what you need to think of yourself as, because that is your role in this, in this, in this market. So the market is constantly advertising, and a lot of people are just being suckers. They're like the guys that watch the TV and buy every single thing that has a decent advert. It's no different to buy in every time the market puts in a massive green candle through a swing high, you steam in. So you need to look very, very carefully and think about each setup. Just because it has a setup doesn't mean that the risk reward is good for you. It's your money here, you know, so use it wisely. I am super picky because I have found that I get paid to be picky. This setup just didn't emerge for me, but don't be a sucker. Don't feel that you have to take every setup and don't be afraid to miss anything. The final thing that I wanted to go over, this may get lost on a few people, but it's really, really important, um, is this little section that I tweeted last week that I've screenshot. I was short the FTSE last week. You might have guessed that from, from this little tweet up here. But the key tip or key point to take away here is don't be afraid too many people are afraid of being humiliated okay so it's a bit like shorting the equities everyone that i speak to is really bullish equities and you've got this kind of syndrome that i call the hero or 
I'm not going to say the C word, but you know what I'm thinking. Which is basically where you get a setup uh, very, very contrary to the popular sentiment. People get scared to take these kind of trades. They get scared to go against the sentiment because if they call it or they trade it and they get it wrong, they feel stupid. Okay, You have to forget about that. No one ever made any money giving a fuck about what anyone else thinks. Let me tell you that. So you need to just stick to your setups and be strong. You don't want to be scared to short a market just because it's rallying and you don't want to be scared to buy it just because it's falling. This trade that I took in the FTSE last week, I know there's quite a few people in here tonight that were in my live room that saw this trade. Um, and they, they know how it panned out already, so excuse me for going over it again. But it highlights a few principles. First off, it was a beautiful level. I mean, you don't really get a lot better than this for a swing trade, okay? You have a 61% fib, smack bang in the area, prior lows. You really want to be looking to short there. I was looking to short there until I saw Twitter. And when I saw Twitter, I saw there were quite a few people who, suffice to say, I don't respect on Twitter, who I notice are often wrong, who are basically considering this a done deal and saying, that's definitely going down, you know, all in short at that level. And that kind of made me think, you know what, I'm just going to hold off here and just see what price does rather than crack it. I had an initial idea to sell 639s with a stop at 670s, but I watched the price and when we kind of got this, we came up very close to the 670s and turned ahead of that area, I thought to myself, well, this is interesting now, it looks like it's running out of steam. I'm not going to get in yet because we're on the wrong side of the level, but if we can get back beneath this level, I'm actually going to take this as a swing trade. And the price came back into the level, and again, when it just got back beneath it here, you know, quite a few people um, that I know that I was talking to this about were like, do we get in now? And I'm like, no, just wait and see. We'll, we'll look for some kind of sign that the price is going to go. Um, and then we kind of we backed and filled here and then this to me was the sign it was the bearish outside on the hourly the important thing is here is that we've broken above the level it had become support we would rejected higher prices we got back beneath the level tried to rally again failed and then smashed back down now this was a little bit late in the day to be taking this trade but i had a pretty good idea that this was going to go um, i decided to take it i used to stop above the high and my initial target was here and I held this overnight. Now, the next morning, the market gapped down. Now, I raised my target. The simple reason that I raised my target is the 6558 was ATR on the day. You do not want to gamble that the market is going to get past ATR. Why should this be an outside day? It's not going to be an outside day just because I'm short. So seeing that that comes in there and seeing also that that comes in right in the region of this prior swing low and knowing that a lot of momentum traders will look at that swing low and this area particularly here and as soon as price goes through there guess what they're going to want to do they're going to want to short for a gap close so knowing that there's likely to be a little liquidity pool of excited frantic sellers that price is advertised to down there I decided to use that as my target to basically buy back off the sellers um, and this became my target at 6569s which we which we later hit so, to summarise briefly what we've looked at tonight, tip one, know what you're looking for, okay? Tip two, know where you are looking for it. Tip three, write it down so you can refer back to it, so you can learn from it, so you make sure you don't miss any setups. Tip four, do not be afraid to miss anything, because usually there will be a better setup that comes along. And tip five, don't be afraid... Um, you will usually find that the best trades are the ones that are the least comfortable to take. I have found that time and time again. I found that it gets squeezed a lot more on the trades that look like no-brainers than the ones that conform to your setups but don't actually look that good and a lot of people don't like. So I'm going to leave it there and I will catch you all on Twitter. Thanks very much for coming. Um, feel free to download that sheet as well. Um, you should find it pretty useful, but you need to get in the habit, like anything, of filling it out each and every day because it's all very well to have something, but unless you um, unless you make use of it, it just becomes another one of those things that you know you can have sit on your table and and not get any benefit from. But thanks very much, guys. Have a good, safe trading week, and I will speak to you all again soon.